Can you imagine shaving seconds off your rally times by mastering these techniques that most drivers overlook? Most people who watch motorsports probably know the basics for racing on tarmac. Stay within the tyre's total grip, use smooth inputs and finish your braking before you start turning, then rolling onto the throttle before unwinding the wheel. Great, now forget it all. Now you're trying to manage a consistent 13 km slide through the woods. Well, in this video you will learn how and why you need to know these techniques. On these surfaces you must extensively use left foot braking, trail braking and braking into a slide. You should never lift when on the limits of the car, even in a rear wheel drive. And surprisingly, front wheel drive cars are typically faster than their rear drive counterparts. Some of these things may sound and feel counterintuitive to an experienced track driver and for good reason, but those rules don't apply here. As soon as you make a serious input on gravel or snow, you're almost always beyond the tyre's total grip and into what I call car park driving. That's the challenge on most rally stages. The grip on each given tyre is very small, almost useless. Add to that effect the loose gravel and dirt on the surface and you will find you're almost consistently operating in the vast no man's land outside this available grip. And once you're sliding, control inputs don't have the same effects they had when you were on tarmac. What has the biggest effect when we're sliding? Weight transfer. Since we have such little grip available to us, we have to rely on the delicate balance of the weight transferring around the car. This means that steering is much less significant than throttle and brake application. The throttle and brakes can be used to transfer weight from either end of the car and the basic procedure for moving a rally car through slippery gravel or snow is to get it sliding, then manage the angle of slide by transferring the weight back and forth. You should use the throttle and brake pedals like a pilot would steal the rudder of an aeroplane. This is how I typically approach a corner. Start with quite a lot of bake bias, whether that is in the front or the rear, and stamp on the brakes, hard, at corner entry. With the weight now on the nose, use trail braking to initiate the turn and let the car's rear step out and start to slide. If you time this braking and sliding just right, you will arrive at the turning point with the car already at a good angle to slide through the corner. But what is the right angle? Well, this varies between corner to corner. In other words, the steering wheel should generally be pointed at dead centre, as you're relying on the car's weight to push you around the corner. Now that you're pointed in the right direction, get on the throttle. Transfer the weight to the rear and drive out the corner. But what should we do if the line into the corner is wrong? If you're in the mid corner and you need to tighten the line, you press down the brakes without lifting off the throttle. This slightly sheds some speed off the wheels, slowing the car down just a pinch. It puts more weight on the front wheels so that without you steering at all, the car pulls into the apex. When the time comes to stamp on the gas down the next straight, just let off the brakes, stay on the throttle and let the weight transfer to the rear. Possibly add a little counter steering to open your line and straighten out the car. If you've achieved all this correctly, you've probably only done a little steering with the wheel. Some at corner entry and maybe a little at the end of corner exit. The rest of the turning was done through weight transfer. In very tight, slow speed corners like hairpins and acute turns, you may find it difficult to get enough weight on the nose to initiate oversteer. Here, you can use the handbrake to begin the rotation and hang out the back of the car. Although you must get back on the throttle as early as possible to restart that forward momentum, many people can over-rotate in very tight turns and slide to a stop. Then there's the famous pendulum turn, also known as the Scandinavian flick. This is when a driver turns away from the corner before turning into it. For me, this move works well when I'm going slightly too slow to initiate oversteer through braking. It is also useful when carrying too much speed down narrow roads and sliding into the corner won't give me enough braking before reaching the turning point. But this is how it's done. First, steer away from the corner to accomplish some braking. Get out of the brakes and blip the throttle, transferring the weight and snapping the car into the corner. Then get back on the throttle to transfer the weight back to the rear. Hold the line and pull the car around the turn. Modulate the throttle and brake as needed to adjust the line. Most of us in rally use left foot braking. There are several reasons for this. First, while delicately sliding through a corner, you want to be able to switch from throttle to brake faster than you can move your right foot back and forth between the pedals. Second, quite often you want to apply the brakes while staying on the throttle. This stabilizes the car while at speed and in a corner. It also maintains boost in the turbo car. If you're in a front wheel drive car, left foot braking while staying on the throttle is a classic way to initiate the corner. 
By keeping the engine loaded while applying the brakes, you slow the front wheels down a bit and get some weight transfer to the front. This braking also slows down the rear wheels more than the fronts and initiate oversteer. Once you're pointed in the right direction, get off the brakes and allow the front wheels to pull you into the apex. This is why front drive rally cars are now typically faster than their rear drive counterparts. Left foot braking turns the classic front wheel drive understeer on its head. So now all you have to do is go out there and practice these techniques and mastering them. Once you've mastered them, you will make your rally time so much faster. Some drivers out there aren't even thinking about sliding or where the tyre's grip is at or even weight transfer. That doesn't make them any slower, but whether you're a natural already or a rally driver in waiting, awareness of these techniques will give you something to build upon. Like what you've been watching? Then you can support the channel by subscribing and leaving a like to help the video get seen by others. Let me know in the comments what you think of these techniques. Thanks for watching guys. Everything I've just told you though is completely useless unless you have the right setup to go with them. So go check out this video here.